Hey everybody, it's Brian, and welcome to the 79th Q tutorial with C++ and GUI programming. Um, today we're going to learn how to paint text. So we're just going to call this Text Painter. Put it in the usual location. And of course the dialog. We're continuing our drawing and painting series. And of course first thing we want to do is open up the header, add our includes. Then we're going to override the paint event. Alrighty, now we've got our paint event. We can actually get down to business here. Now, what you should really understand is that painting text is actually pretty complex, but Q handles a lot of the complexity for you. I know a lot of you are probably breathing a sigh of relief when I said that. You know, pretty much same thing I did. Finally over my cold. I'm still a little stuffy though, so you have to bear with me if I sound a little congested or if I have to stop the video to sneeze or something. So the first one thing we're going to do is just simply draw text. Which we're going to give it a point in space. I should say XY coordinates, so we'll say 100, 100, and then just give it a string. And we're just going to say Hello world. Save and run. And eventually this will build, I promise. There we go. And you can see at X and Y100 we have hello world. Now what that does is it chooses the upper left point that you gave it, the 100, 100, and then it starts drawing the text from there. And it doesn't really care if the text goes outside the bounds of the window. That's just very simply, you just give it a point in space and say, draw it here. Now what we're going to do is a Q-Rect. You know these, you've worked with the rectangles before, so we're going to say 100, 150, and we're going to make it 25 by 25. Or I'm sorry, 250, not 25. Geez, what was I thinking? Got a little ahead of myself there. Sorry about that. And then we're just going to painter, draw rect, just so you can see the rectangle. And then inside that rect, we're actually going to draw some text. So we're going to say painter, draw text. And then we want to give it the, the rectangle, the bounds, as you will. And we're going to give it an alignment here. So we're going to say cute. And we're just going to say align left. Now, if you've ever used with a, if you ever used with a, geez, sorry, if you've ever used a uh, word editor like Microsoft Word or OpenOffice or something like that, you know what alignment does. It just moves all the text to the left. So then, what we're going to do, just a little copy and paste magic here. I'm sorry, one of you guys out there gave me this awesome tip and I didn't write it down. I'm really sorry. Uh, basically, it's an easy way to make the the line reappear that you just typed. I think it's like control shift up or something like that. I'm really sorry, but I apologize about that, whoever you are. Like I said, it's just been a crazy, crazy day. And then we're going to just uh, make this one on the right. So now we have our rectangle, and as you can guess what's going to happen here, we're going to have one that's aligned to the left, one that's aligned to the center, one that's aligned to the right. Compile and run this. Sure enough, there's our rectangle. There's left, center, and right. Now you notice how left and right are kind of at the top. They're not actually in the center. Well, we're going to fix that real quick. Oops. Let's get this right here. And what we're going to do is just very simply add an OR. So we're just going to OR these together. And we're going to say, cute align center. So what we're saying really here is align it to the right and then align it to the center. Oops, sorry, V center for vertical center. So we're going to say align that to the right and then align it vertically in the center. You can see how left is at the top left, right is at the right, but it's in the center, and center, of course, is in the center. Very simple. 
Now I want to discuss um, something you may have stumbled across already if you're just kind of playing, playing along here. Let's say QRect, and we're going to call this Rect2. And we're going to give this a very small rectangle. We're going to say it's at 100. Oops, can't type today. 150. Let's actually bump this over to 120. Give us some more real estate on the screen here. And we're just going to say 25, 25. So we've got just a very small rectangle here. And of course, we're going to painter, draw rec, just so you can see the bounds of the rectangle. We'll say rec 2. And then painter, we're going to draw text. And we're going to give it our second rectangle, or rec 2. And then we're going to give it a long sentence. We're going to say, this will be clipped. Now, if you've ever played video games, you probably already know what clipping is, even if you don't understand the term. It's when something goes beyond the available viewport. You know, like you get one of those characters that's like stuck halfway in a wall or something. You notice how it says, this will. Well, well, where's the rest of it? See, the bounds of a rectangle is extremely small, 25 by 25. And it tried to wrap the text. It says, this will, and then the rest of it is just clipped, meaning it's gone. Now, if you run into that problem in the real world, obviously the solution to that is just make your rectangle bigger if you can, or make your text smaller. See, this will be clipped. Now it's no longer clipped because we made our rectangle much, much bigger. Now, like I said, there's a lot to drawing text. For example, what if you wanted to make something bold and something italic and something underlined and something this and something that? Well, Qt makes it very simple. Some languages make it extremely difficult, probably more difficult than it really needs to be. But uh, with Qt, of course, life is good. I'm, I should probably ask um, Nokia if they'll hire me <laughs> because I seem to be turning into like this Qt evangelist. And I don't really mean to be. I actually like other languages as well. Whoops, call this rec 3. And we're just going to say uh, 0, 0, and 250, 250. We're going to do painter, translate. Now, if you don't know what translate is, it's kind of one of those really in depth commands, but really what you need to know is it takes the current position and translates it. In other words, it gives it an offset. So it's not really going to be 0, 0. It's going to be more like 20, 20. Now, if this was 100, this 0, it would end up being 120. And we're going to get into translate in a different tutorial because it is kind of in-depth. And it's one of those that just really leaves you scratching your head for a while. So we're going to say doc. And we're going to say set text width. And we're just going to give it the bounds of the rectangle. Now, if you're wondering what uh, Q text document does, it allows us to render, maybe some of you are already ahead of me, HTML. So you can say set HTML. And then I'm going to just, just for the sake of time here, copy and paste a very, very long string in here that I already have done. And if you don't know any HTML, don't worry, I'm going to explain everything. Um, in HTML, there are a series of tags. They start with a start bracket and an end bracket. In those tags is a command. See this B? That stands for bold. Now because we've started the bold, everything beyond this would be bold. So we have to end it, and that's what the slash does. See start bracket, slash, command, end bracket. So what we're saying is really everything in here will be bold. And then we've got this U tag. Well that's underline. So we're going to say everything from there to there is going to be underline. But we're turning it off. So we're going to say hello, this text right here is going to be bold and underline. BR stands for break or hard return, so we're just going to make two lines down. And then we're given a pretty hefty font command here. We're saying font face or the, the style of font is going to be arrow. The color is going to be red. The size is going to be six. And then we're going to italicize it, and it's going to be the word world. And of course, we're turning the italics and font off. Now that we have all that in our document, what we need to do is draw the document. So we draw doc, draw contents and give it a reference to our painter. I should say give it the address of our painter. And then give it the rectangle we're painting it in. 
Now, admittedly, I wrote this code on Linux, so I'm not sure if it's going to be 100% on Windows, but we, we may have to tweak it a little bit here. Nope, worked exactly the same. So you can see there's a bold underlined hello, and then there's our italics world. Now, I didn't see an underline on there. I'm not quite sure. Nope, it was italicized, that's why. So if we change this to underline, then world will be underlined as well. Compile and run. See, and there you go. So that, in a nutshell, is how to draw text in Qt. I'm sure you probably have a million and a half questions, and like I said, drawing text does get very complex, and you can make it much more complex in Qt if you want, but this is the, the very high level of how to draw text. This is the easiest way to draw text. And 99% of the time, the easiest way is usually the best way, and that's why it's the easiest way, because they know you're going to use it a lot. So just to recap, if you want to draw from a point, you just draw text and give it up either a, a Q point or the XY coordinates. You can draw within a rectangle and you can also align them. Just remember that if you do draw within a rectangle, it will clip. You can change that behavior, but we're not going to cover that in this tutorial. And then you can give it a Q text document and actually render HTML. So if you want stylized text, like a rich text editor sort of thing, you can do that as well. And remember the translate command, put it to 2020 which is right here. Now you do translate because the current position was 00. zero. Translate puts an offset of 2020 because we added 2020. I know that's confusing and like I said we're gonna go over translate in a separate tutorial here but that in a nutshell is how to draw text. Um, I'd like to say there's really more but without getting into a four-hour conversation on font metrics there really isn't. <laughs> so this is Brian thank you for watching I hope you found this tutorial educational and entertaining.